Hi, this is Joe Matthews, CEO of Franchise Performance Group. I'm going to discuss franchise sales, lead generation, predictions for 2023. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon, J.P. Morgan and Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, just a host of financial experts, warn that the U.S. may slip into a recession in early 2023. It's the May slip which creates some market unpredictability and consternation among franchise buyers. And many franchise buyers react to market unpredictability with a wait and see attitude. Now, how unpredictable has the market been? Well, I'm gonna present the graph of the Dow over the last three months, and you're gonna see a V pattern, which shows in a very short period of time, you know, 10% slippage, and then 90% of that recovered, you know, all within you know, this 90 day period. And it's this level of market volatility historically is not great in the short term for franchising because the market values predictability. Franchise buyers want predictability, even if it's predictably bad. So Keith Gerson from FranConnect recently published an alert, which basically reported for the franchisors on their platform, there's a 37% dip in both lead flow and deal flow Q3 year over year. Now, what are the contributing factors? Simple, right? Typical high inflation. You know, you've got a 8% inflationary rate. So you're seeing discretionary income go down, rates of savings reduced, and then you know, further um, downward pressure if their you know, IRA, 401ks, investment stocks are, are, are going down. So at the end of the day, short-term less risk capital. Uh, and then perhaps that increases risk avoidance, or at least at the very least needs for higher returns. Uh, second is the high cost of money. You know, SBA loans now are nine and a half to 10%. We haven't seen that a long time and it's up from, up from about 6% a year ago. Now keep in mind, this increases the buyer risk without adding reward. Uh, rising labor costs, you know, unemployment remains sub 4% which is basically full employment economy. I notice in recessionary times when unemployment pushes over 5%, franchising seems to benefit. And that's where people start moving away from the job market and more towards self-employment options. Uh, rising costs of supplies. Yeah, it's driving up franchisees' cogs and franchisees are really struggling with the inflation rising you know, wages to pass it off to their customers who are you know, also suffering uh, on price. So, you know, their margins are going down and that means franchisees predictably in some systems are going to earn less, which is going to boomerang back to be bad for validation and ultimately you know, bad for franchise sales. So adding up in the short run, you know, basic economic theory would say there's going to be an increase in competition for what Frank Connect is presenting as fewer franchise buyers. Are we seeing that? You know, so I went on SEMrush and I pulled up uh, the amount of advertisers going after kind of an innocuous uh, franchising term like franchise opportunities. And what I saw was uh, 27 advertisers a year ago, uh, 73 advertisers with the same search volume materially today. So yes, tremendous amount of increase for the same traffic. It's going to drive advertising uh, costs up in the short run. So what can franchisors do? So here's our basic recommendations, at least for our clients. Now, um, since I started Franchise Performance Group, you know, we're drawing our recommendations from 130 brands and 22 years of experience. So this, if we're going into a recession, this will be my fifth recession, right? You know, so what I'm telling you is going to be feedback from the past four and, and what works, right? And most of this stuff is things we should be doing anyway. Uh, one was focus on unit level economics. You know, ultimately, franchisors have to help franchisees make money. That's priority one. Priority two is positive franchisee, franchisor relationships and collaborative solutions. Tough economic times can work for us, work for us tremendously in the long run on, on franchise sales because it creates this operations, you know, brother in arms, foxhole mentality where franchisees and uh, and the franchisor, you know, galvanize uh, to 
uh, to, you know, to, to make sure that franchisees and the brand survive and thrive. Third, franchisors should engage in how do I de-risk the investment and incentivize franchisees to join in the short run? You know, in an effort to curry favor with brokers and make up lost revenue, some franchisors are going to be tempted to raise their franchise fees without increasing the value to the franchisor so they can pay brokers more money to drive more volume. And maybe that'll work, but keep in mind, you know, brokers are going to be under the same uh, reducing market if, it is, if the market is reducing in the short term that the franchisors are. So I don't know if that's a solution. Uh, could be. Um, give you another track. You know, we have a client touching hearts at home, and we recently went to a fee simple mar model. So no marketing fees, no technology royalties, uh, performance guarantees with royalty rebates. If sales floors are not hit, this you know fee simple shared risk models resonating extremely well with franchise buyers, and we're seeing actually a dramatic increase in lead flow rather than decrease. And we'll talk about why that is in a second. You know, be wise with Google. You know, Google is still by far the largest marketplace for entrepreneurs to find new franchisees. It's not brokers. It's not portals. It's Google. That doesn't mean, because I always get accused of this, right, that portals and, and uh, brokers don't have their place in the market. They're extremely valuable and necessary uh, to, um, to, to helping good brands find good franchisees. But the largest marketplace is still Google. That's where almost all buyers go who want what you have at their point of interest. Uh, it is the most cost-effective venue to intersect uh, franchise buyers with your value proposition. Uh, a lot of mistakes sometimes franchisors make is they apply this consumer marketing mentality, but they're, and they forget they're investing a high-ticket High risk and uh, high reward investment product. So I will tell you the tactics uh, to recruit franchisees are distinctly different from somebody who does it for a living you know, than the tactics for you know selling cupcakes or whatever your product or service is. Five, uh, get smart with Facebook. Um, among U.S. adults, seven out of ten use Facebook. There's 190 million users just in the United States alone, and 75% have an income of more than 75 grand and 82% are college graduates. So these are the people that buy franchises. Uh, another tactic is consistently nurture leads. That might be, mean something as simple as just implement retargeting advertising uh, or something as more complicated as one to two piece of meaningful lead nurturing content every month. Uh, tell a compelling brand story. Now, our clients have 15 to 20 page franchise information ebooks, robust franchise opportunity websites, complete with charts and graphs and, and a personal story that explains what makes their business unique and profitable, sustainable for the long haul, defensible position in the marketplace. So tell your brand story. And then last, you got to increase your budget. You have to resource your development objectives consistent to reflect the times we're in. Now, keep in mind that most uh, PR firms and advertising agencies would tell you it takes twenty to $25,000 in ad spend to recruit a franchisee. We're not seeing that, but it certainly takes at least you know, $10,000 to $15,000 in ad spend uh, to, recruit a to recruit a franchisee. Now, it might be higher with more targeted investor groups like a multi-brand, multi-unit restaurant franchisees, but it could be lower with low entry costs. Uh, um, low barriers to skill uh, type businesses. So budgeting priorities. One would be get your website right. A good franchise opportunity website converts 2% of its traffic to leads and then 1% of those leads makes an investment decision. So the, oh, getting your website right is not a, it's not a cost center. It's a revenue generator. It's only a cost center if you get it wrong. Uh, second would be get, you know, put money into digital, you know, so Google, Facebook, possibly LinkedIn for B2B concepts. Uh, third would be engage the broker networks. That's, I like that pay for play model. Uh, fourth for me would be PR. We move into recessionary times. Good news stories get picked up and shared more than, uh, you know, in, in, in good economic times. Uh, five would be portals. 
Uh, six would be targeted lists. And then seven would be events and publications. But just remember, uh, franchise buyers don't buy franchising. So even though the pool's shrinking, right, they buy one franchise. And the market will always reward. There's always room for a profitable business model and a brand that treats its franchisees with dignity and respect. Uh, this is Joe Matthews, uh, CEO of Franchise Performance Group. Our website is franchiseperformancegroup.com. And if we can help you, don't hesitate to fill out our contact form and we'll reach out to you. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.